joining us now, as always, is Lauren Tula Poindexter, the hostess of Tula Talks Online. And, and Lauren, let's begin with something that confuses me, because I get texts from all over the place saying, are you watching the BET Awards? The BET Awards, though, were on CBS. So yes. the quality of the awards was one thing. Where they were being broadcast is another thing. Can you explain? Yeah, so, you know, BET, as well, many of you should know, it stands for Black Entertainment Television. Now, usually BET, the BET Awards would only be streamed on BET, but since BET is now under Viacom, it's, it was televised pretty much everywhere. Viacom is responsible for VH1, BET, you saw it on CBS, so it was nice to see Black Entertainment on national TV, although it wasn't just BET, you know, it was nice to see the award in front of a new audience. So unlike the Black News Channel, which is Black owned and operated, the BET, the Black and BET does not stand for Black owned, correct? Correct. So BET used to be Black owned, and that was one thing that we definitely took pride in, but it has been sold. Um, however, BET, their mission is to still uplift Black Voices, which is something that we definitely saw during the BET Awards. This year, it was hosted by Amanda Stills, and she came out the gate, boom, pow, pow. She made sure that she gave us some political statements. She made sure that the Black voice was heard, that the, the Black presence was felt. And I personally think she did an amazing job as a host for this virtual award show, because I wasn't quite sure how they were going to be able to pull it off. So, so let me go back to boom, pow, pow. We'll, we'll, we'll pause at boom, pow, pow, so people can see exactly what boom, pow, hey, there were two pows, right? Pow, pow. Let's take a look. Because now I can't even dream of speaking about sleeping knowing Breonna Taylor's killers have not been arrested. When I said, I don't got the time, I'm on my trampoline, I meant it. Cause give it a minute and racism gonna take the bounce out of that too. This BT Awards is a little different. Main thing is it's virtual. We're getting real in touch with being real inside because outside is on one. It's got COVID and cops and Karen's gone wild. It's like we hated on 2019 so much, it called its brother 2020 to come through and provide a collective molly wop. And that's precisely why we had to do the awards because we deserve a break. So everybody was talking not only about the hostess, they were talking about the acts. The fact that they managed to pull this off and with social distancing, virtually in, in many instances, they said it was a television moment to remember. It definitely was. You know, again, I was a little concerned as to how they were going to be able to pull off this award show. But, you know, thanks to technology, the artists did an amazing job. I think it allowed the artists time to prepare their performance. So we did see some performances taking place in people's houses. Megan Thee Stallion, she went out to the desert, gave us a Tupac California Love style performance, which was absolutely amazing. Um, Usher and SZA, they had a set put together. So, you know, it was really some remarkable performances. And I think because they were able to pre-record, I think that was pretty amazing. And it allowed for technology to get really creative and to really give us like a virtual experience. It was kind of like a combination of watching music videos that were just on level 10, combined with Amanda Stills with her comedy and her remarks that kind of thread the messages together. And then they also did a really good job in reference to putting out a lot of political statements, you know, to make things aware that's what's going on right now. One of the things I think that people found amazing about it and perhaps reassuring is that Black Americans have always prided themselves at being able to take less and not only making more out of it, but making extreme out of it. And a lot of people took pride in the fact that the artists and entertainers on the BET Awards managed to do just that. Also, picnics. We are known for our family reunions. If I have one t-shirt from the green side of the Walters family to the other side of the Walters family to the brown side of the Walters family, you know, all of them saying I was there, but now even the family reunions are having to go virtual. Yeah, you know, everyone is going virtual at this moment. And I love the fact that we've been able to pivot because let's be honest, it's been a little sad sitting in the house all alone and not being able to enjoy the festivals and the concerts we usually do. But the Roots Picnic 
was next on the list in reference to going virtual. They had their virtual picnic. It kicked off with Michelle Obama, and she encouraged a lot of people to go out and register to vote, which actually resulted in half a million new people registering to vote, which I think that's pretty amazing from one event. The picnic also had SZA perform. Um, they had her perform, Roddy Rich, and a few other amazing artists. And you know, again, it was a great way to see how we can once again pivot during a time where it seems like, hey, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna entertain ourselves? And not only did the Roots Picnics do this, Essence Festival, they have also pivoted and uh, they hosted a virtual festival a few days ago and they're also having another part of it, I believe it's starting on July 5th, if I'm not mistaken, um, gotta double check those dates, but they are having another virtual Essence Fest, which once again, is, it's an amazing way to be inclusive and for people to not miss the greatness that you know we're used to having annually. Tula, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to talk about the winds of social change that are actually sweeping the entertainment industry. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. 